Welcome everyone. The webinar will begin in just a moment. Jackie? Yes. If, if Michelle and Alan put their pictures up there, it would look like the beginning of the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> and Colin would be Alice. <laughs> All right. On, on that note, we, we will begin. <laughs> All right. Thank you, educators, for joining us today from across the country. We know that our food service industry and your schools are facing an unprecedented crisis. American Culinary Federation represents the largest association of professional chefs in North America, including you, our culinary educators. The food service industries and culinary education have been impacted by COVID-19 in many ways. Your schools are closed and there will be challenges ahead. Your students' learning needs, their mental well-being, and their home lives are all factors like never before. Let's take this time to share best practices and share support for the students who will be the future of the food service industry. As of today, 188 countries around the world have closed schools nationwide affecting 1.5 billion learners and representing more than 91% of total enrolled students. The world has never experienced such a dramatic impact on our education system. Our panel of chef educators today will discuss their challenges and take questions about your challenges, about the changes to how we teach, as well as to the future of culinary education after the health crisis. Please know that the ACF community is here for you. And now let's meet the panelists for today's webinar, ACF United, Culinary Education, Best Practices in This Challenging Time. Chef Suzanne Greer was bitten by the kitchen bug early in life, working in every position from bartender to line cook. Her passion for this work led her to earn her culinary education and she has graduated from programs in both Paris and at Sullivan University. She worked in professional kitchens for years before moving into education, where she flourished among her students who are eagle, e eager to learn her culinary skills. Real is a frequent descriptor of her um, by her students, um, which perfectly encapsulate the auth authenticity and candor she brings to the classroom. Many of her students come from diverse backgrounds, single parent homes, and communities lacking the resources students need to make Dignified, a dignified life for themselves. And that's an invaluable gift that she gives them every day. Dr. Colin Roach is a professor of culinary arts at Johnson & Wales University's North Miami campus. Chef Roach has been in the hospitality field for over 35 years and has multiple degrees in the discipline, graduating from Newbury College, Southern Maine Community College, earning his MBA from Lynn University and his PhD from Florida Atlantic University. He's also an award-winning educator who is a member of numerous professional organizations and is also an ACF certified executive chef and certified culinary educator. Dr. Roach also co-authored the book, Culinary Educators, Teaching Tools and Tips. His area of research includes culinary and hospitality education, tertiary education, and the scholarship of teaching and learning. He also lectures and consults for schools and business across the country and hosts his own YouTube channel titled Dr. Professor Chef and also an educational podcast titled Chef Educator. Chef Pam Bedford is a certified culinary educator, graduated from Florida Culinary Institute in 1998 and began teaching over a decade ago um, after working for 10 years in the food service industry. Her current role is as Director of the Institute of Culinary Arts, a magnet program at Eastside High School in Gainesville, Florida. She's also involved uh, as a judge with Skills USA uh, at the state level in Florida since 2010. She's also judged at the national level for a few years and serves as the chairperson for the wedding cake competition at Skills USA Florida. Chef and her program have also been involved with ProStar and her students compete in the culinary and management competitions since 2008, and our students are also a current top 10 finalist in the NASA Hunch competition. Um, so everyone keep their fingers crossed that her students' Mexican-inspired dish will make it to the International Space Station. In addition to being a bus driver for her culinary program, which I'll let her tell you about, 
She's also now a teacher at home to her two young children, Lily and Jackson. Chef Phil Cropper is culinary arts instructor at Worcester Technical High School in Newark, Maryland. He has been teaching culinary arts for over 18 years, both in the secondary and post-secondary education systems. For the past eight years, uh, Chef has been at WTHS, uh, teaching culinary arts and baking and pastry arts in his uh, ACF EF accredited programs. And his programs have also uh, received exemplary status from the ACF under his direction. Chef has been in the restaurant and hospitality business for the past 34 years, starting at the age of nine. And after graduating from the top of his class at Baltimore International College with degrees in both pastry arts and culinary arts, he uh, became executive chef and pastry chef at many restaurants in Maryland. He also owned and operated an interior design firm since uh, the year 2000, and he's a principal designer, designing uh, and specializing in high-end restaurants and specialty shops. Chef Cropper believes that being a part of the community and giving back are very important, so he serves as president of the Delmarva Cooks and Chefs Association, his local ACF chapter, and also as the board of directors for his church and many other area organizations and charities. Chef Mark Wright started his career in the restaurant business as a dishwasher. After graduating from the culinary and baking program at Erie Community College, he began his culinary career working in various restaurants and clubs beginning, uh, before beginning his tenure as executive chef at Transit Valley Country Club in East Amherst, New York for 28 years. He now has the pleasure of teaching uh, at the hospitality management uh, department, his alma mater, uh, State University of New York Erie in Buffalo. Along with his duties uh, as assistant professor, he also serves as a department chair overseeing the culinary and pastry uh, hotel and restaurant management curriculums. He has been an active member of ACF of Greater Buffalo for over 50 years, and he was also the first chapter junior member. On the national level, Chef has served on the board of directors as ACF national treasurer, as the former Northeast Regional Vice President, as the former chair of the American Academy of Chefs, AAC Honor Society, and currently serves as your ACF National Secretary. Chef Darren Nine graduated from the Florida State University where he earned his bachelor's degree in hospitality administration and his MBA from Webster University. He is currently working on his doctorate in organizational leadership. He began his food service industry career at the age of 13 while growing up in Eustis, Florida and Chef has owned and operated uh, many restaurants, managed food and beverage operations at private clubs and resorts, and continues to do work uh, with others in a con consulting capacity. He is currently Director of Culinary Instruction at Marion Technical College, and also works at the regional, state, and national level with SkillsUSA, and is Vice Chair of the Board of Directors of SkillsUSA Florida. <laughs> Chef Nye lives in, o in the Ocala National Forest with his wife, Diana, and their two rescue dogs, Scooter and Whitley, and their found cat. And I'm your moderator, Jackie Pressinger, ACF Director of Strategic Partnerships. So thank you panelists um, for all being here and thank you for those tuning in and let's begin the, in the uh, discussion. So our first question uh, that came in in advance via email um, is uh, a general question which is great to kick off with, which is uh, how exactly has the COVID-19 crisis affected your program um, which obviously typically uh, includes hands-on education. Um, so if you can give us a brief overview, uh, Chef Cropper, I'd love to start with you. Uh, well, it's affected us greatly. I mean, we're a one-year program, so my students have a two, hour, two and a half hours a day for the whole school year with me. So by losing the last two months or so of school with the hands-on portion, which is mainly in the spring, it's, it's 85 to 90 percent hands-on this time of year. So this is when the kids are really uh, honing their skills and showcasing everything they've learned and we're doing all of our banquets and events that we lead up to uh, in the school year. So it's, um, it's taken the kids out of the kitchen. I've switched over to one-on-one -on -one learning via uh, online platforms, LMS systems. We're using Schoology for our district. Uh, as a county, we rolled out computers one-to-one -one two years ago with our high school students. So all of our kids have access to computers, but they don't have access to internet. So uh, we've had to purchase over 600 hotspots to send out to the students in our school system. Um, so we're on week three of online learning. And basically I've been trying to film videos and keep the kids engaged and excited about cooking and, and still keeping up on their studies, but without that hands-on component, 
it's, it's hard because kids in CTE education want to learn with their hands. They don't want to learn by reading books, you know? So, um, so we're just doing everything we can to keep them engaged and motivated um, at this time. Absolutely. Um, wow, 600 hotspots. Um, and uh, Chef Nine, from the post-secondary uh, perspective, how has this affected uh, your program at Marion Technical College? Well, we, uh, by the grace of God, uh, we had our um, program of work set up at the beginning of the year. And so a lot of our hands-on stuff that, that we were doing, you know, your, your knife skills and your cooking methods and all that kind of stuff, the real guts of the culinary program, um, we've, we've done that for the past three um, uh, quarters. So the last quarter was really... Uh, a lot of the business math, we have to put together a business plan so the, the, the students understand, you know, the give and the take of, of, of developing a, a business model. And so um, that is pretty easily done, uh, you know, via the web. Uh, to, but to keep them, you know, excited about, you know, what they're doing and, and the industry that many are no longer a part of uh, because they've all been laid off uh, uh, from their jobs or they're working, you know, one day every couple of weeks, um, we're doing... Um, cooking videos and um, they're pretty, um, we gave them a, a video editing suite, you know, that uh, they can download onto their phone, uh, three minute video. Uh, last week was a healthy snack. The week before was uh, breakfast. Uh, next week is gonna be uh, some type of hot sandwich. And so uh, the rules are, are pretty simple. You know, whatever you have in the house, um, your budget on this is zero dollars and zero cents. Uh, if you've got kids at, at home, to definitely get them involved and so we're trying to engage in we're trying to engage them in the in the world that they're living in and so um, we, we have uh, I have one lady uh, who is uh, homeless and she's staying at uh, some friends houses and uh, in the last three weeks she's been in two or three different places so um, we kind of let her explain some stuff, you know, uh, uh, instead of being able to, to show them if she doesn't have access to a kitchen. So, you know, we're, we're working with them. We're, you know, we're trying to be as, as flexible as possible. Um, and so far, it, you know, it, it's really worked out. Uh, we have a high level engagement. We have a, a text thread. So they're able to, uh, you know, if they have a question about something, you know, throw that uh, question up on the, on the text thread and they'll be able to, you know, get an answer if I'm not, you know, right there. Um, we're trying not to email as much, uh, but, but texting has been a big thing. And then um, once a week, we have a, a Zoom uh, class uh, town hall, and we talk about, you know, situations, problems. And uh, just like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chef Cropper said, everybody's got a computer, but not everybody's got internet. And so that's, that's been our biggest hurdle. And, you know, we're, we're slowly but surely, you know, college kids are pretty smart. Uh, they can they can find a hotspot, you know, driving down the road, and they'll pull over and they'll upload something or download something. So they're pretty they're pretty resourceful when it comes to it. And so, if anything, they've they've developed a very keen sense of of, uh, of computer technology and and how it can better be used. So um, so far, it really hasn't impacted me. My boss is got to put together a class, uh, two cohorts for next year, and so. March, April, May, and June, our, um, our orientation or our, our informational sessions, those have all been canceled. And so we're kind of sitting here trying to figure out what we're going to do, you know, to get the word out. And so uh, we're looking, we're going to have a, a, a marketing, all hands on deck marketing meeting uh, next week. And one of the things we plan to do is to, uh, for me, is to, in my kitchen here at my house, do a couple of cooking videos and then send those out to the area high schools so that we may be able to uh, get those uh, uh, those students interested in coming to Marion Technical College. And so, you know, Pam, you know, she's got, you know, a pretty, uh, you know, pretty good bunch of group up, up there. And I have right now out of the 15 I have in my class, uh, three are from the Gainesville area. So it's not uncommon for them to drive, you know, an hour to come to school uh, five days a week. So, uh, we're going to put together, I think, you know, we're going to fabri fabricate a chicken and, 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 you know, show them how to do grill marks on a grill and, you know, and, and, and some, some proper technique. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to sample their products, but, you know, they'll, they'll be able to, you know, get something out of it. And then I'll, we'll be able to have a, a quick discussion about, um, you know, my program and what separates me from, you know, some of the bigger schools. Sure, absolutely. Um, it's it, things you don't even think of when it comes to, you know, recruitment and what mm -hmm. it's going to look like for the next group because we're so focused on what's happening 
um, right now. Right. Um, now, I know that you mentioned that you're in a text uh, thread. Are you using a certain platform for that, or um, are you just have a group text messaging we, through your just, cell phone? We, just got a, we got a group text message. I, I've uh, included uh, my immediate supervisor and my principal, so he can see uh, the auditors need to be able to see about how we're how we're trying to engage students and um, and on the text. Usually, I'm I'm back with them in like five or ten minutes. Emails are a little bit more difficult, usually within an hour. Uh, but um, it's it seems it seems to be working out really well, and they seem much more into it than anybody else. Right. A really good text app. Sorry to chime in. Is uh, Remind. The Remind yeah. app, I don't know if any of you guys use that, but um, I'm trying to get all my students enrolled in that so I can put out notices to them and they can then also do one-on-one -on -one communication or mess. Right. Mm -hmm. That's important, that, that, that daily communication. Uh, I noticed this week um, a lot less smiles, you know, when I, when I talk to somebody. And, and I think the, the reality of the situation is starting to settle in. Um, and, you know, I, I think Pam said, oh, no, uh, Jackie said this morning she got her, her stimulus check in the mail and, you know, and hopefully that'll bring some more smiles to the table. But it's, it's been, the, the first two weeks have been okay, uh, but the last week it, it was a little rough and a little bit more hand-holding, a little bit more, you know, we're going to get through this. And so now we're not so much educators, I think, as we are motivators, you know. Right. Um, thank you for that. And, and uh, Chef Roach, if you wouldn't mind, um, I, I'm going to add to that. So if you want to let us know um, how the UC program is being affected, um, but also um, it, whatever you're doing in your teaching, um, how do you look at that in terms of um, competencies and, and, and passing students through into the next part of their education? Yes. Um, well, thank you for having me on the panel first off, but um, regarding our school in March, like most schools, we transitioned all the academic classes to remote learning. Um, so that was pretty easy. And that's mostly my area. I teach the cost control, human resources and business. All of the lab classes were put on hold and you know, we keep trying to wait for the, the okay to put those back. Uh, right now it's uh, early July is when we're hoping that maybe, but it keeps, you know, gets pushed back depending on local government, national government, state government, if we can do that. So we're keeping our fingers crossed and making adjustments as we go. Um, as far as the academic classes, the students, they, my students have been great. They made a, a great transition and uh, you know, we're trying to keep them motivated as was already mentioned there and you know, keep them, it's a, it's a different animal to them. You know, they're not used to maybe that, not having an active face-to-face -face with their instructor. So you know, we try to come up with uh, ways of making that connection still. Sure. Um, and, and Chef Wright, how, how is your program affected and, and how are you um, dealing with grades and competencies at your uh, school? Uh, fortunately, we have four weeks to go in our semester, which works out. Uh, for uh, our second year students, it's a, a little easier, I think. Um, we teach uh, mostly hands-on uh, in a restaurant setting or in a large quantity food setting uh, for our, our senior students. And most of them, you know, it's, it's been almost 10 weeks. Most of them have it down pretty good. Uh, the last five weeks of the semester, we teach a banquet and a buffet class. So uh, we, we team teach. So it's really um, four of us that are teaching, uh, you know, uh, eight students in this one part of, uh, in this one class. So it's really easy for us to come up with things uh, that we can put online that can do projects and things like that. The cooking part is, is really done. Uh, we're giving them, uh, like somebody else already said, uh, more of, uh, you know, how would you start a catering business? Um, you know, menus for uh, small functions, large functions, offsite functions, um, in, in grand buffets type deal. We did, um, uh, uh, we do have, uh, we're fortunate to have uh, our front of the house uh, instructor works in a large um, uh, banquet facility here in Buffalo. And one of the other instructors is a, owns his own offsite catering. And uh, so they're putting their expertise together. And in fact, the one, uh, one of the, the offsite uh, catering director uh, owner sent me a 25 page uh, supplement to put on our, our we use Blackboard uh, to send things out. So we do a WebEx every, uh, every week with, uh, with those students. Um, we do a WebEx with our, our hospitality management students. 
which is almost the same class. We're giving them some of the same um, uh, options. And all of them have to do a paper, uh, hopefully, uh, with different insights on how COVID-19 has affected the restaurant industry. We do have, uh, you know, Wegmans is a big supermarket chain here. And we have about, of, of our eight students, four of them work there. And they're working four 10-hour days. So they're, they're, they're coming on and telling us their experiences in the grocery stores and stuff. But most of the stuff that we do, um, you know, and I'm just getting used to this kind of thing. I'm, I, mean, I was hitting a few buttons before I lost everything. So I'm just starting to get used to this kind of thing. So there's, the students are really, you know, accepting it. It's good to get them on, say hello. And most of my, uh, as the department chair, I send an email out every week to every student in all four programs. You know, do you need anything? Do you need anything? And I have three sheets or four sheets of uh, uh, registrations I have to do. I have a great uh, relationship with the registrar. I just send it to him, sends it to them, emails it to them. So one of the things I try to do as the department chair to keep in touch with all the students in all the programs is saying that we're here, do you need anything, do that. Uh, fortunately, we have a secretary and, and she's uh, helping us out with, with emails and things like that. So we're doing, you know, we're doing the best we can, uh, you know, and what's in the future, I don't know. Well, thank you for that. Um, Chef Greer, I'm going <clears> to <throat> ask you the same question, but I'm going to also add on um, a, a, another piece too, which is um, how about the students that you may have in your classes that might have um, IEPs or special learning needs and how, how are you working with that challenge? So our program is roughly over 100 students, 50%, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 50% of my students are IEPs or 504s, which is an individual education plan. Um, so I'm pretty tight with the uh, CTE educators in central Indiana. Um, and we've all kind of talked and, and brainstormed in what our program decided to use and is uh, the KP kitchen curriculum. Um, it's a very excellent curriculum. Um, we use Canvas. So all of our students have been using Canvas all year. It's great for accountability. You know, when they're like, oh, I did all my work. And you pull out, like, no, you didn't even log in. So it's great for that kind of accountability. And then with the KP, what I like about it for my SPED kids is it, it does the auditory learning. So it reads to them. You read it. It's very interactive. You do games. And it kind of takes a lot of the... Uh, the pressure off of us to come up with all kinds of curriculum. So what we've done is we just picked certain modules to finish out the rest of the year. Um, another thing we've done is I've done a once a week Zoom kind of, it's not required, but it's like a check-in, hey, how you doing? Um, we do, yeah. I, you know, I want my students to learn good uh, curriculum I want them to have good uh, competencies, but I want them to also have good mental health. And I, and I think when some of my students are worried about where they're gonna get their next meal, they're not so concerned if they're gonna do you know, assignments. And that's another thing what I like about KP is you, and Canvas, you can do it all on your phone. So I'm not in a, in a situation where all the students have access to laptops. Um, I also do a s'more newsletter. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. Um, I, I have pictures. I work with two other chef instructors. I have pictures of us and, and cooking. And I've encouraged students to send pictures of stuff they've done to me. And I put that on our social media outlets and our newsletter. I put important things to know in that newsletter. Um, we reach out to our various uh, students that might have more severe special ed needs and talk to their teachers. Um, I think the hardest thing for us in our particular district is we're, we're told it's the, at, at the CTE level because we have, I think over seven sending schools. The sending schools are telling your students one thing, we're being told another, so it's true. <laughs> It's uh, it's a little frustrating, but I'm just I just 
we check every day that they're doing KP, that they're doing uh, what's expected of them on Canvas and try to stay engaged. We use the Remind app. Um, I've done some videos. Uh, my partners have done some videos because I think there's something very comforting in seeing and hearing your instructor's voice. I mean, these kids spend three hours a day with me. Some of them call me mom. You know, we are, we are tight and then suddenly it's been like ripped apart. And my heart goes out to my pro start students. We won, um, for the state of Indiana um, management and culinary. Uh, and, you know, so that, that's what I've been doing uh, primarily. Um, well, Chef Bedford, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to you in just a moment um, because I also wanna talk about some competitions and scholarship things. Um, but um, a question had come in about what platforms U.S. educators are working with. So I know that um, Chef Greer, you just mentioned KP and um, Canvas. Um, are any of the other educators on here want to share any uh, platforms that they're using that you're finding successful? We're using uh, Schoology um, as a district, and I know there's a free version of it as well. Um, it's just like a Blackboard style system where we can do discussions, we can post quizzes and assessments. I post copies of the culinary review. The kids can read it, they can take a quiz, they can earn credit. Um, and then we also use KP Compass. Um, but I like to, to mix up or diversify the work that I'm giving my kids. Because right now I think one of the biggest things is just to encourage them on a social emotional level to stay passionate and connected. And, and they're scared, they're worried, they don't know what's going on from a high school level. So um, right now it's just about keeping them engaged and encouraged and excited about the industry and about cooking and, and that we're gonna get through this and that you know we'll, we'll be there together. So I've been trying to give them work to do, but more on a positive, you know, uh, proactive side, as opposed to um, a lot of structured academics. Sure. We use um, John, uh, Johnson Wales, we use Blackboard and has a great feature, the you know, collaborative classroom. So we can get together if we want to do synchronous, but it's also where I would hold my virtual office hours so they can check in at any time and ask questions or I can help them with an assignment. So that's been very helpful through these times. And we, we use Blackboard too, and, and we use the, you know, we all have virtual office hours now. And uh, Pearson has been very good to us. It's one of our book companies in uh, uh, letting us, you know, some of the students don't have the books and things like that. Um, so uh, they've been, you know, you can download some things if you have to do. Blackboard has been uh, our main, our, you know, our main uh, you know, delivery platform. And our students have, uh, we teach 30% of our classes online now, like our supervisory development and nutrition and math are all online if they want to take them that way. So most of them have experience how to do it. It's some of us instructors that don't have that much experience on it, which is really good. But our IT department uh, is there 24 hours a day type. And uh, I mean, I made a couple calls today to get uh, some things and they were great. So that's what great. we're doing. I'm using Google Classroom just because it is linked to the student's email accounts that the district gives them. So that's been a way to kind of cut out any excuses or you don't have to really go track down kids because they've all got the same email that I've got. So that's been really, really easy as far as streamlining and getting it out to them as fast as possible. Great. Well, thank you. Well, that brings me back to you, Chef Bedford. Okay. Um, and uh, again, if you want to add, you know, uh, anything about how this has uh, affected your classroom or your students. Uh, but additionally, I want to uh, pose the new question about, I know how important scholarships are. Um, and I know that um, as Chef Greer had mentioned with her students, uh, not being able to go on to national competitions and things to to earn some of these um, how your students are reacting to that and if you have any uh, anything you'd like to add um, yeah so thankfully our pro star competition for the state happened right before everything for the country was kind of shut down so we were able um, I only had one team competing this year uh, management team and they competed in one scholarship money so that was successful and then shortly after you know everything kind of shut down um i have students that were competing in skills usa that had won the regionals that were on their way to states um you know the best thing we can do at this point is just console them because honestly you know it's 
there's not a lot we can do. Our hands are really tied other than trying to direct them to different avenues and encourage them in other ways. There are a lot of scholarships that are given out based on essays and not necessarily going and making an awesome plate of food and serving it to judges in real time. So I've been really trying to encourage them to seek out these other ways. You know, sometimes with these high school students, they get so pigeonholed into, this is what I gotta do, this is what I have to do. And they're, you know, as my father used to say to me, one track, no switch. So I've tried to switch it up with them and try to encourage them in other ways. Uh, I have really great administration here on campus um, and they actually, have been really working together to continue to put things out to students uh, from a scholarship level, but they also spoke a lot to us as faculty about grace in this time. And I've really taken that to heart. Um, you know, I come from industry as a lot of the other panelists and we come from a field of no excuse is a good excuse kind of mentality. Um, and now it's time to really take a breath, take a step back, um, and try to make it easy on everyone. You know, I have students that are involved with other magnet programs. I'm a magnet program here, so students have to apply to get in, but where do they stick magnet programs in our state? They stick them in the low socioeconomic schools. So I have the gamut of students. I have IB students <laughs> who are seniors and who are losing their minds over the amount of work they have from their other students. I do not feel that my job is to be an extra source of stress for them. So when it came down to making plans, I streamlined everything. They have to turn in one assignment to me once a week. You know, I've really gone from teacher to counselor. I've had students lose jobs and they call me and they go, I lost my job. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I get it but so did a lot of other people, you know, and they don't understand why they're losing their jobs when some people are keeping their jobs. And I'm thinking, well, you know, your coworker probably has two kids and a wife he has to support. And they look at you as a high school student. So there's been a lot of consoling them and trying to talk them through it and just maintaining that connection with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, excellent. Um, thank you for that. Um, have you heard anything from any of the students that um, that this might affect their plans for post-secondary culinary education? You know, everybody's still kind of in a holding pattern right now. Um, I have students that are waiting on scholarships. They fully intend to continue when they are allowed to continue. Um, two of my students uh, that were seniors last year and they're freshmen uh, at the Culinary Institute of America you know, they're home and they're like the rest of us in a holding pattern. They have every intention of going back. That's their goal. That's what they're focused on at this point. Um, but you know, right now they don't have any answers either. So they're just kind of sitting and waiting. Right, right. Um, well, Chef Roach, I guess um, I, I, I wanna pose sort of the, the scary question, but it's one that, um, that I'm being alerted is coming up a lot in the, uh, in the chats. Uh, on this webinar, and that is, um, do you, or what might you recommend as a contingency plan if this goes into the fall semester? Well, for the um, the online part, for the academics, it's, it's, you know, it's an easy kind of switch because we already do that. It's those labs that are gonna be really tough. Um, I know some, I've heard some small schools are doing like mise en place bags and handing it out, but it could, it's not really realistic to a large school and all over the, the nation. So um, we're hoping it's going to be done. Um, I could see there's a need uh, going forward that there's gonna have to be some type of online education uh, for culinary and for labs. And there is programs now and taking one that was very surprising. It was good, you know, it can be done. And it's just gonna have to be developed more that there may be a remote teaching of that lab experience. And it's just gonna have to be developed a little quicker. Right. Um, have, have you seen any students withdraw um, or, uh, or any other patterns at all in, in post-secondary education um, in those that you're speaking with? In mine, we haven't. We've had some that have had to postpone because of family and they had to travel and go back home and they'll just continue at another time, which is 
typical in a you know post-secondary universities, people could come and go. Uh, but we haven't had any that are currently there in a waiting pattern like the rest of us and just hoping to everything gets back to normal as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and I'm wondering if this has sparked anything that you all might be uh, considering adding to your curriculum in the future. Um, uh, perhaps it's something to do with, um, uh, there's, you know, it's takeout is hot right now. Um, and there's a lot of skills that might be uh, able to be learned around there around e-commerce or, or web design or, or um, takeout apps or just anything in general that's kind of bubbled to the surface that you might be adding. Um, Chef Nine, I see you shaking your head. So I'm going to uh, give you first shot at this one. Well, um, our uh, our business plan module that we're um, we started last week. Uh, I, I told everybody, I said, you know, let's not do the the brick and mortar, you know, uh, you know, concept. Let's go ahead and do like a food truck, so that you know that's something that 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 you can uh, that's got some teeth right now because everybody you know has has gone to to take out some of these larger uh, footprinted uh, buildings. It it's kind of hard to do. Uh, take out uh, because the server's got to walk through this cavernous, you know, building to get from the kitchen, you know, to the front door. Uh, and they don't want to, you know, sell out of the back door because of, you know, security reasons. So there's a, there's a lot of things that, that I think we could, that we're going to rethink as we, as we come through this. Um, but uh, we're, we're doing uh, a lot of food trucks and uh, some things like that. Uh, you talked a little bit about uh, micro, what was the, the concept, Jackie, that you, you threw out there? Oh, yes. It was, it was a question that we received from an educator prior to the um, start of this, which was about um, Riverside County, California, um, having now permitted uh, micro home restaurants um, and other states considering that as well. And I, I think that I, after, after you said that, I'm thinking, gosh, you know, that's really kind of a great idea, you know. So now all of a sudden, um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you've got some, some issues that you're, that you're having to, to, you know, to contend with, uh, that's really a, a, a neat concept that you can do out of your house and, you know, with little or, or no red tape. Uh, I'm sure there's some, some inspections along the way, but you know, that cottage industry is, is big in Florida. Uh, but now you've got something where you can do, you know, take home meals or something like that. And you set the bar, you know, am I going to make 20 tonight? Am I going to make 50 tonight? Um, one of the restaurants down the road from me, um, I, I think they're having fun. Uh, the, it's called the Dam Diner uh, because it's on, the, on one of the locks and dams of the Ocklawaha River. And um, they're, they're doing four family meal takeouts. And then they got their uh, augmented uh, regular uh, uh, menu. Um, you know, but uh, uh, tonight is when, tonight's uh, meatloaf. And so it's a meatloaf for four, five sides, uh, bread, uh, there's beverage. It's really, really a cool thing. And they're, they're, they're kind of having some fun with, uh, you know, that, that whole family takeout concept. So uh, that's something that, that I think we all need to look at. And, uh, but yeah, uh, we're, we're trying to, to keep it real uh, with our module for our, um, our business plan. So uh, I've suggested to the kids that, you know, let's do a, a partnership maybe and, and, and just do a real simple, um, you know, a food truck concept. Sure. Uh, and Chef, Chef Cropper, um, I, I know just even from your bio about facility design and all these other things and all these different skills that, that um, we can touch on. Anything that you're thinking about um, adding to your curriculum or expanding on? Or, well, my uh, students have a capstone that they have to do every, that's due at the end of the year anyhow, uh, where they have to either come up with a bakery concept or a restaurant concept based on their program. Um, that can be a food truck, but they need to do demographics of the area it's going to be in, income level for that area, marketing, naming, call, food costing, oh, yeah. advertising. I mean, it's a whole, it's a very detailed project. They started in October and they work on it throughout the whole school year. Um, and then it's due um, for the seniors. It's due the beginning of May. The, uh, the juniors have until the last, you know, the last week of school. So they get a little extra time to work on it. Um, so that we're going to kind of put in place, but there's certain parts of that that I may need to take out. Um, just trying to wrap up the school year since I do teach a one-year program. Um, there's a lot of things I'm trying to make sure I cover all the competencies and standards so the kids can actually re get their CFC or their CFPC certification through ACF. Um, so I'm making those priorities right now for kids of mine that I know want to go on into the industry. Um, like most high school culinary programs, you know, I have a 60-40 split. Some of the kids are just in there because they didn't know what else to do. Um, 
And so, so the kids that aren't looking to go into the industry and we're just teaching them a job skill, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of treating those kids a little bit different than the ones I know want to go into post-secondary or to actually work in the industry. And right now we're just encouraging them and we're just trying to give them a, as much as we can using these online platforms like um, KP Compass and Ruby and et cetera. Sure. Thank you. Um, and Chef Wright, I have a, a question for you. One of the questions that was emailed to us in advance um, was not from an educator, but from uh, someone who's working in industry, uh, wondering uh, what they can do uh, to, to help with these students who might be lacking some of the skills that they may have typically learned in a program um, and they're coming out. So I didn't know if you had any advice when it comes to mentoring any of these students who might be graduating from a secondary or post-secondary program, not having uh, the full extent of their culinary education covered by the hands-on. Well, I can, I just say, can say that, you know, most of the, most of our students that are out there that are going into the industry um, are probably working in the industry already or doing something they like to do already in the industry. So they, they've, you know, developed uh, in the restaurants, they've developed the, the, the chefs, uh, you know, what the chef wants them to do. Uh, we, uh, you know, we learn from them when they come back. But uh, I think that uh, if, if we could, you know, there's not too many restaurants that are open, all the fine dining and all the, uh, just the takeout places are going and they're going gangbusters. And, you know, here in New York State, I, I think it's across the country, they're making you know, a lot of money not working on unemployment. And I think that's going to be the problem in the future is, you know, getting them back to work after that, you know, receiving, you know, uh, so much uh, government uh, help there. But, you know, uh, I talked to the sh some of the chefs that I work for uh, on the side and things like that. And, you know, they say, can you send the students? We, we, we can't really offer that, but we, we can give them a hint that if they're looking for, if you're looking for work and you want to work and, uh, it's not going to be the same, uh, but you're still going to get your, your, your basics. You're going to get your knife skills, your, you know, uh, your sauces and all that other kind. I think uh, mentorship is, 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 is on hold too. Everything is on hold, I think, across the whole uh, country here. I mean, um, people are, you know, we just, your, our hands are tied, you know, uh, the government, uh, you know, the county doesn't want us working. They, they, the school doesn't want us there. You know, the students, they don't want us have anything to do with the students getting jobs and things like that. They just want everything to stay as safe as possible. I don't know if that answers the question, but um, I think that's what we, we, we have to do more. The thing I'm worried about more than anything else in, coming, uh, in a post-secondary program is the secondary programs uh, being able to get the students to uh, graduate and to uh, move forward, you know, with their counselors and, and their, and their uh, fo folks like that, that, you know, are going to push them forward, what school to go to and things like that. And it's tough for us. We can't recruit. We can't, uh, you know, we can offer programs and, and send emails out to the high schools and all that, but they're all closed too. So I think we have, there's a dilemma out there is that it's going to be a rough, uh, you know, you know it's going to be rough for, mostly you know, post-secondary schools, secondary schools too, having students, you know, finish their work. You know, all our, all our BOCES programs have shut down. Um, and, you know, my son teaches at a high school and he said that the superintendent already told him, you know, don't bother, we're not coming back. Uh, he's doing the best he can online and things like that. Um, but, you know, they don't, you know, they're not giving the, re the New York State region exams this year. Regents diplomas will be uh, given out if they were, uh, enrolled in the regions and had a certain percentage, uh, you know, uh, 85 or above. I don't know the student list. But I think that's what I worry about more. I worry about the students that I have there now and trying to get them up and out, if, to, you know, with some sort of education. Uh, and, you know, if they can say when they've graduated, you know, I learned a lot there and stuff like that. Even these last five weeks where we've been, um, you know, I doubt we'll be back. But these last five weeks, they're, they're, they're getting as much out of the program as they can. Thank you. Um, and, and I'm not sure if you know or if anyone else in, in post-secondary has any answers. Are there any, um, has there been any discussion about any makeup classes or hands-on work um, in, the, in the future? Or is it just too early to? I know, I know one thing we did in um, uh, our last five, uh, five weeks for uh, certain classes are bake shops. We have an intro to bake shop and then we have a classical bake shop. 
And the classical bake shop instructors, you know, they put together uh, a box of ingredients and had the students come and pick them up. And they did the same thing for the intro kids. And ironically is that, you know, there's some great things out there on uh, YouTube and Facebook and all that. And, uh, uh, you know, Brian Pethley had some stuff out about make a patty shoe and things. I said it to our intro to bake shop guy, uh, a young lady who's teaching the class. And she said, Oh, that's great. I'm going to use that. So I'm just waiting for him to come out with some more. And I know he's online because I saw a question. So I thought I'd throw that out there. So. <laughs> yes, we're very, very glad to have him uh, joining us. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to change the topic a little bit because um, I did get a question that came through that I, that I thought was just really different and stood out and is important. Um, and that is, um, as someone who's not working as um, an, an educator in culinary, um, they want to know how you all are doing and, you know, what, what they or um, we or your local ACF chapter might be able to do to support you and your students. So, uh, Sh Chef Greer, uh, I'd love to, <laughs> to start off and hear how, how, how you're doing. Um, so, I've increased my antidepressants, so that's a good thing. <laughs> um, I... I I miss my students. Bottom line, I miss being there with them. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I went into teaching. Like, okay, I, I'm a good baker. I'm I'm a pretty good chef. Like, I'm. But to be challenged to teach a kid a skill and having to be creative about it, there's there's something about it. When you see that kid, the light turn on, or let's say they're in your, in your culinary class and they didn't realize, yeah, you could go become a food research person. You can be a food photographer. You, this is not just culinary, it is everything. And not being there to have them turn on the light, um, it's hard. And then not only am I, am I creating content for my students, I am homeschooling my seven-year-old ADHD child <laughs> and she doesn't understand so much when mommy has to be at work and, and balancing that. And my husband and I are sharing an office. Now on top of that, I'm president of um, ACF Indianapolis and making sure um, I'm getting content out to my membership and, and even friends of membership, resources that they can um, access. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot to do, but what, what I've kind of started to do is the silly Facebook lives at night. <laughs> and I use these weird tiny hands and I've been reading these crazy books. The, the amount of feedback I've gotten that from other people have just having a little fun, you know, a little laughter, uh, it feeds my soul and I know it's, it's helping people get through the other side. Great, thank you. Um, and I do, I enjoy your Facebook videos too. <laughs> um, Chef Bedford, um, how are you doing? And what can any of the CTSOs or ACF chapters or anyone um, do to, to help you and your program? Unless you want to uh, homeschool an eight-year-old and a six-year-old, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's been challenging, um, but I feel like mm. I have stopped running a thousand miles an hour, which is what I do, um, you know, my little, my biological children is sometimes I refer to them. They know that mommy's other kids, the big kids need her too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had them while I was teaching. So a lot, you know, I have students that remember when I was pregnant. So there's, I found a very good balance with all of that. And I have decided that no one is going to lose a large amount of intelligence because we took a month off of school. Yeah. My children and my students are not going to be at a huge deficit in August because we decided that one day we were going to make ice cream in the ice cream ball um, as a science project. Like it's made me really reevaluate like, this is not a, the biggest deal. This is not the last thing we're going to have to deal with. Is it going to change things? Absolutely. Do we have to reevaluate some things? Yes, but nothing, ha nothing is 
has to be dealt like it can wait five minutes things can wait five minutes and so it's given me a lot of perspective and i've really taken i have to take a lot of deep breaths sometimes with everything you know and teaching online is stressful mm -hmm. you know when you're in a lab with students and everybody's making the omelets you can say to 15 different people within three minutes different instructions when you're giving responses online, right? I'm, my students are currently working on just like most of yours, restaurant development, okay? And I tried to keep it fun and light for them and make it not super stressful, but design your dream restaurant, your dream whatever, you know, whether it's a food truck. I'm trying to individually respond to them and continue to encourage them. My gosh, that's hours and hours and hours of me not doing what I normally do. I run around this kitchen eight hours a day, like a lunatic, like most of you, I'm very rarely in front of a computer typing. So that's been challenging, but you know, I homeschool the kids in the morning. I homeschool my big kids in the afternoon after I make my little lunch for my kids. They know that mommy has to deal with the big kids. So I found a good balance. The first week was a lot. I think we're finally hitting the smooth sailing part. And at the end of the day, we are all going to be fine. This is going to be fine. In five years from now, we'll look back and be like, wow, huh, well, we got through that. Okay, that wasn't the worst thing. So hopefully it's the worst we'll have to deal with. But, you know, I feel like just everybody just, if they could take a breath, that helps a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 I agree fully. Um, so there's a question that has come up a lot um, on the chat that's going through um, and it's sort of a, um, a big one. Um, and it's that some of the educators feel like they are just moving their students through the paces, moving them through. So I was wondering if we could go around quickly to each panelist and ask how you are addressing grades. So, um, Chef Chef Nine and um, Kitty. Um, it, <laughs> that was that was LBK, little black cat. Um, uh, I mean, I'm I'm still grading as as harshly as I did in the classroom because uh, this is something they've got to get done, and the fact that we're not in the classroom doesn't alter, you know, that reality. Um, there is, I will tell you, this is a lot harder to teach remotely than it is in the classroom uh, because now um, well and I can tell you there is no nine to five in the in this I mean it's Saturday morning at 7 30 hey I got a question you know I'm like okay what, what's going on um, and so it that that's been a, a reality for me but um, no I mean I'm I'm still I'm still grading you know pretty harsh and and I'm I try to call and follow up a lot more uh, than I than I would in a classroom uh, just so I, I want to make sure that they're they're going down the the right path and not getting you know sidetracked somewhere. So that's that's the hard the hardest thing for me so far. And uh, Sh Chef uh, Cropper, um, uh, from uh, a secondary standpoint, um, we're a we're basically the grades are frozen from the last day the kids had class with us physically, which was March thirteenth. So whatever grade they had in the class then it's frozen until um, until the end of the school year. So the kids' grades can only go up. They can't go down. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I have one kid. Um, I only have one student that's in jeopardy of failing the program. So I'm working with him to try to get as much work in, extra credit or whatever he can do to, to pass the class. Um, the hardest thing for me is going through all the competencies and making sure that the kids have achieved everything they need because I only run a one-year program. So it's a very intense one-year program. Um, so because of that, um, you know, I'm just trying to make sure that my kids all at least have an 80, you know, a B or better in my class and that they are, they're meeting everything they need to meet um, to advance uh, because most of the time I, I don't get them back next year. Um, but right now their grades are frozen and I understand that it's going to be that way. I was on a Zoom this morning with our school board um, and we were told that from here on out, starting fourth quarter, which started today, the grades can only go up, they can't go down. So. And, and Chef Roach, how about at Johnson & Wales? Well, these, as everyone knows, are not normal, you know, teaching and learning conditions. I saw something online that I, I thought was pretty cool. They call it the pandemic pedagogy. So mm. we're kind of just teaching. Um, we're doing the best we can, but, you know, to do the quick switch to online, it's not online learning. You know, we didn't 
have the preparation. So in my area, I, I, assessment is still there, but I really want to focus on teaching and learning. And that's the main thing. And, you know, we're not there to watch them. We're not there to, you know, we, they're, they're going to be cheating or something. Really, you got to look past that. We have to get, go forward with the, with the, the teaching and learning and keeping sure, making sure that we're available for them. And I even did, um, I call it high traffic times. That's when we need to be available. So I made all of my weekly assessments and homework on Sunday, Sundays at 11.59. So instead of having something, we would have like a Tuesday or a Thursday if we were doing face-to-face, -face, just easier for everybody. We're in different time zones. Just put it all on Sundays, 11.59, which is what we do with our online school anyway. So the high traffic time is Saturday and Sunday because that's when they're going to have all the questions. So that's when I'm available to answer their questions and kind of guide them. Whereas Monday and Tuesday, it's like crickets. You know, nobody's asking questions. They don't want to know anything until we get back around to that weekly cycle. And it really is just weeks at a time, chunk it up for them, do micro lectures, and just help them get to the finish line. Sure. Um, well, we're, we're coming close to our um, end. I was wondering if we'd go around in just um, one minute each, um, one thing that you'd like to share, a um, piece of advice or encouragement uh, with your fellow educators who are tuning in. Um, so uh, if we could start with you, Chef Wright. Well, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I, I think, and everybody has said it, to uh, have some contact with your students and things like that. Um, you know, I, I have all their phone numbers, all their emails. So I, I try to call as much as possible. If they email me, I'll give them a quick call, say I'll take care of that for you. Um, and I'll call them back and make sure it's done. I just, you, know, you just have to have that, have to, have to have a little compassion for them. I know it's tough for them and you gotta be able to, uh, you know, uh, solve their problems as best you can uh, remotely. And I think uh, uh, I have hats off to all my instructors that work for us at the college, all our uh, part-time adjuncts, you name it, they've all pitched in and they've all done a wonderful job. So hats off to all of them. We'll get through this, and uh, I think our students are going to be are going to benefit from this because it's a little bit different than what they do in a kitchen every day. Sure. Um, well, uh, thank you, and uh, Chef Bedford. Um, yeah, just grace and compassion at this point. You know, we are all facing struggles, whether it's homeschooling our own little kids who don't understand our sarcasm. Uh, to, you know, supporting our older students or dealing with a spouse that's always home. So I feel like a lot of grace and compassion and just take the deep breath, make the ice cream in the ice cream ball. It will all be okay. All right. Um, and uh, Chef Nine. Um, as an 18 year high school classroom uh, veteran, and this is my first year teaching in post-secondary, um, you know, kids would always come in and they would, they would have issues and problems and things like that. And now I, I find myself, the problems are all the same, but now they're amplified because now it's a, it's a mom with like two or three kids who doesn't have rent for this month, or I, I need toilet paper. I need this. I need that. I went down today and, and got some of the commercial toilet paper out of the, the, the lockup and, and dropped it off at a, at a student's house because they couldn't find any. And it's, the villagers south of me have taken all the toilet paper in north central florida i don't know what they're doing with it um i think they're drinking it and so it's it's been one of those things where you know you're in addition to helping them teach and learn uh, we're also helping them solve some of their problems so that they can focus their time and efforts on on their learning so um, it's been a for me it's been a, a little bit different uh year this year because of uh you know I got to find this girl a bus pass and this lady needs this and this guy needs that. And, and um, so I'm, I'm trying to help facilitate their learning, but I'm also trying to help them get more focused, you know, by, by solving, you know, some of their problems and, and uh, making it easier for them to, to, to learn. So that's, that's kind of the, 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 the stuff where I'm, I'm heading at this year. So. Sure. Well, thank you. And Chef Roach. Um, I think has already been mentioned communication, you know, communication, keep those channels open, communicate often as much as you can and explain and explain and explain and keep explaining because they're going to have lots of questions, it's a whole new environment, a whole new world for them. And basically it's normalize the abnormal, you know, try to get up some kind of synergy going with them. Sure. And uh, Chef Cropper, your final thoughts. 
Uh, I guess the biggest thing is just compassion and um, guidance for everybody, letting them know that we're here for them. Communication, uh, touching base with all of my students, uh, making sure that they, they know what's up and if they miss an assignment, it's okay. Just try your best, try to get it back, you know, another assignment turned in next week. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's hard for everybody. It's hard for employees, it's hard for other teachers, it's hard for parents. Um, you know, again, just a, a family of, of four here sitting in a house with a the dog that kept bothering me earlier, um, you know, when you're home all day, you know, it's like you're just adjusting to the new normal. And for someone like me who normally leaves my house at 4.30 in the morning and gets home at 10 o'clock at night, I'm always on the go. So when I have four hours of downtime, I don't know what to do. And my students are the same way now, you know, they're, they're, they have that downtime, but they're also worried about where's my next meal, you know. Do, do I have heat at my house? I don't have a TV, you know? I mean, kids come from all different areas. So it's it's that, it's it's just worry in general. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll be through this soon and everybody will get through it and we'll move on. Thank you, and uh, Chef Greer. Um, you know, a lot more love, compassion and understanding uh, goes a long way. Um, I think we're coming into an uh, era where a lot of creativity and divergent thinking is happening, which I, I love seeing that. And you know what's really helped me get through is my teacher tribe. I have a really tight-knit CTE teacher tribe and we, we collaborate, we commiserate, and uh, I can't say enough about having that resource. And uh, I appreciate you for doing this panel today. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you so much. Um, and I've already heard from ACF National Office, um, due to the overwhelming response to this session, um, this conversation will continue in support of culinary education and um, our culinary educators. So thank you for um, uh, assisting us in doing such a, a fabulous job. One other point that I wanted to make um, for anyone who is still looking for resources, either for your students or for your own professional development, is that um, ACF currently does have an online bundle um, of coursework that's available for free right now on the ACF Online Learning Center. So that includes everything from 30 hour safety and sanitation courses to recordings of um, past ACF conferences and um, is, a, um, is a resource that is there for you. Um, so um, again, um, I can't thank you enough for joining us today and I thank everyone who joined us to tune in. Um, I know that the students are in great hands uh, with you and I applaud your flexibility and how much you truly care about the success of the future chefs in your classes. Um, it's just, it, it just comes pouring out of all of you. Um, and we're grateful that you're there for them, for the future of our industry. Um, for all of the educators who are tuning in, um, please know that the ACF applauds you. Um, keep up the great work and let us know how we can best support you. So on behalf of the ACF and ACF National Office, please be safe. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jackie. Jackie. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Jack. Thank you.